Today was a bit uh, impromptu, kind of. It wasn't impromptu. I had planned to do this before, but um, I had forgot to send a newsletter earlier in the week. So I did send one this morning, uh, notifying you guys. Thanks for joining if you saw that email. And uh, yeah, so I've got some cool things to discuss today. And um, I want to first uh, find out how long you've been playing the oud, because today will be a bit of, it says a beginner oud lesson, but it's, I mean, we're going to do it a beginner way, it's, uh, but we're going to be talking about a more advanced maqam. So um, I want to just make sure I know how long you guys have been playing for so that I can kind of uh, make sure I'm speaking in the right uh, language so that it doesn't go over your head. So please let me know in the comments uh, how long you've been playing oud or how long have you been uh, working with these maqam ideas and all that kind of stuff. That'd be great. Um, a few things... Um, if you are interested in maqam, uh, learning more about maqam, how it's played on the oud, and how to modulate between uh, different maqamat, different maqams, then uh, this Monday I have a promo starting for my maqam mastery program. And uh, that's you need to be on the newsletter to find out more about that. So there's a link in the description of this video. If you're not already on the newsletter, you can uh, sign up there and uh, you'll hear about the uh, promotion that I have. Uh, this uh, it's a special en enrollment for the Macom Mastery Program. Uh, the Macom Mastery Program is a is a is a pretty comprehensive uh, video demonstration of different Macoms, how to approach them, uh, different modulations, especially for oud players. Um, and it's got a lot of material in there of how to um, modulate between different Macoms, what finding out what their building blocks are and how to relate them. Um, that's the Macomb Mastery Program. There's also an ear training portion to help you try to hear different flavors that you get in different Macombs. We'll talk about that today too. And um, it, this uh, special enrollment, we're going to have um, uh, some bonuses. So I have done four Takasim workshops uh, over the last uh, uh, six months or so. And um, I have the replays uh, filmed, and uh, so you can, if you join this uh, this week, then the pro enrollment is going to be from Monday to Friday. Uh, if you enroll this week, you get access to those four uh, bonus takasim replays, uh, which is four hours of, of learning material, and you also get uh, invited to the next workshop, and you, so you can join that workshop for free. It'll be held on Zoom. And we'll be doing it uh, in November. Uh, so that's a great bonus that you can get um, if you uh, join this week from Monday to Friday. Yeah, so um, so yeah, um, on to what we're going to discuss today. If you haven't already told me um, how long you've been playing Oud, please do that. Thanks, Mark. Good to see you here. Uh, 
so this will be right up your alley if you've been playing for 10 years or so. Um, today I want to talk about a very special maqam, a very strange maqam. It's called Bastan, Bastan Igar, or, or in Arabic pronunciation, Bastan Ikar. Um, this maqam is not just a maqam in its, in its true sense. It's not a basic maqam. It's a more a tricky maqam in that it combines two entities. Two, it really combines two maqamat or two different maqams and performs them in kind of one, synthesizes them. And so these, in the Turkish Ottoman tradition, these are known as compound maqams. This is a compound maqam. It's got two or more modal entities that overlap and are performed in such a way that it may usually will begin in one modal entity and then it will end in another modal entity. So we'll see how this works. And I also want to talk about um, uh, something that will help you frame your understanding of Makam um, a little bit better than the way that it's portrayed these days, I think, in the, in the more, um, in the more uh, modern way where we look at uh, you know, the notes as in A, B, C, D, or Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, this kind of thing. Um, this, I think, will help you understand and help a little bit in understanding the context of what a maqam is in its natural sense. All right, so uh, first uh, things first, let's discuss Bastanegar or Bastanegar, this maqam. Bastanegar is two ma maqamat put together, basically. The first maqam that it uses is maqam saba which we discussed last, uh, last YouTube Live. So if you haven't uh, seen that, if you need a refresher on what Makam Saba is, you can go check out that uh, YouTube Live from last week. So we've got here the notes. This is Makam Saba. D, E half flat, F, then G flat, A natural, B flat and then C and then above that we go to D half flat or D flat D flat more likely and then E natural and then as far up as F as well so we have this uh, some Saba is a strange entity on its own so when you take Makam Saba and you connect you connect it to another Makam and create a compound Makam it's uh, even more complicated in some ways, but let's just think about it these in these two ways. We've got Makam Saba And then we have another Makam called Iraq Iraq starts on the B half flat note here So this is the part that of Makam Iraq. Makam Iraq, um, what Makam Iraq usually does is start here and go to G natural. So when in Makam Bastanikar, when um, these two Makams are Saba and Iraq are combined, you don't any longer use the uh, G natural, use the G flat. So that's this is the part of Makam Iraq that stays the same in the context of this compound Makam Bastanigar. And if you extend it below that, you've got the notes B half flat, A, and G. So altogether we've got B half flat, C, D. Now we're starting to enter Makam Saba territory. F, G flat, a, B flat, C, D, C, So sometimes uh, Makam Bastanikar is described as starting on the, the B half flat note. But 
in reality, um, in the Turkish tradition, the Ottoman tradition, the melodies do not start there. So when we look at a maqam, especially a compound maqam, in terms of a scale, we start to, that's the weakness of describing it in a scale, is that it doesn't show it adequately to how it's actually performed. So uh, what happens is, in actual performance, maqam bastani kar starts around the, the th let's say, the third degree, the D note. And it highlights the saba sound, the saba flavor. And then it ends on the Iraq note, the B half flat. This is the essence, the essence, the very run-down, watered-down version of Bastanik Air is essentially start in Sabah, make your way down to Iraq. So that's basically the gist of it. The starting note and the finalis in melodic phrases or in a song, the finalis is different than the starting note. And this is very important. For example, this is very different than a basic maqam, which starts on the tonic, develops, goes up and does whatever it does, and then ends on the tonic. This is very different. This is why maqam bastanigar is very uh, strange and sounds very different. It has a different starting point than, and a different ending point. They're not the same. different flavors. We have the Makam Saba flavor and the Iraq flavor. And combining these two Makams together create the Makam Bastanigar. And so they have to be uh, performed in a certain way in order to make sense according to the, tra the tradition. So melodies tend to start around here. <laughs> Saba flavor, and then ending on the B half flat, the Iraq flavor. So this uh, brings me to something that I wanted to discuss, which is kind of lost on um, the way that we learn Makam nowadays. Um, in the past, in the past, uh, maqams used to be, where I'm, I'm talking, let's say, uh, 15th century, 14th century. Um, in the past, maqams, at a certain point, they were, you know, think of them as modal entities. At a certain point in time, they started to decide, well, um, we're going to call these positions on the fingerboard locations. Makam means locate means literally means a location or a place or a seat, uh, a place in in physical location. So we're going to call these. Um, we're going to connect the places on the fingerboard with modal entities, makam. So you ha you started. They started to name these different um, positions, these different notes in the basic scale after modal entities. And so there was a logic behind it. And so. The Iraq maqam started on the note Iraq, in the same way as the note, the maqam rast started on the note that was named rast. And so uh, these modal entities started to become uh, associated with their positions on the fingerboard, 
of the instrument that would be, be played. So the Iraq note is here. In nowadays, we think of uh, maqams as being transposable, let's say, and the intervals and the become more important. So let's say if you wanted to play maqam Iraq on a different key, you could do that. You'd just tune differently or you'd play it uh, fourth up, like maqam Siga. You could play it here. You could have that same transposition and transpose it elsewhere and you get a similar entity. You get a similar entity. But in the past, um, you know, it was it was a bit different than that. The, there were transposed maqams were kind of a different uh, entities on their own. So anyway, each of these uh, basic note degrees would be named after a maqam. They usually would start, uh, the maqam would start on those notes that were named after them. Um, so that's where the note Iraq comes from. This is the note Iraq, the B half flat. I'm going to see if I can share my screen here and show you something, a little chart. You can see this on my website. I'm going to put this in the chat. Thanks for the question mark. I will answer that in a, in a second here. Let's see if we can... All right. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, this is a screenshot from my website. You can see a chart of um, a chart of the note degrees and what their historical names were. Uh, let's see if we can scroll through this. Uh, this is taken. This uh, image here. This chart is taken from um, a thesis. Uh, what's his name? Oh yeah, Scott uh, Scott Marcus, Arab Music Theory in the Modern Period. And uh, so you can. Uh, this is taken from that. Um, that, and so we've got all the notes here. This is the low octave. Uh, the lowest note was named Yaka. We have uh, A flat was Karar Hisar. The A note was Usheran. Uh, you have B f low B flat was Ajam Usheran. The B half flat here. Um, this is a particular way of writing. It means B half flat was the Iraq note. You see, C was Rast. D was Dukkha, E half flat was Sika, and so forth. You have all these different note names. And these have a logic to them behind what Makam they're associated with. And uh, so, for example, Makam Rast would start on the note Rast. And uh, the Makam Sika would start on the note Sika. But now through the, the uh, modern period, we've started to talk about maqams and, and know them by their note names, their western note names, either do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, or a, b, c, d, e, f, g. And so we've lost a little bit of this connection between the logic that the, you know, our, the, our ancestors and the masters before us in maqam music, they used the logic here and identity, modal entities were associated with certain ranges and certain locations on the fingerboard. And it actually makes a lot of sense uh, the way that they had thought about it. Now, I don't know the particular details off the top of my head, um, but if you are interested in reading more, um, there is a book out there uh, called, um, uh, this one is uh, Walter Feldman's uh, Music of the Ottoman Court. This book is hard to come by. Uh, you can only read it at uh, libraries and stuff. Um, but this goes through the, um, you know, some of the, some of the logic um, of the old way of thinking about maqam. And uh, yeah, so I find it very interesting that we don't use this anymore. I think it's very enlightening to think of maqams in this way because maqam literally means location. And location of what? Location where? Location of note on the fingerboard. That's really all it is. And so you pass by different locations as you go about along uh, different um, locations on the fingerboard. You go through different makamat as you run through the fingerboard and you play melodies. And you can highlight different modal entities as you go through these different places. They had that thought out. And uh, so I think it's more a better way of looking at uh, makam than thinking in terms of just um, note names and a scale. Because you do, in some ways, you do have a scale, but you have modal entities that which interact with each other. 
and uh, it's all how it relates to the fingerboard of the instrument and so um, do check this uh, blog out um, it's uh, uh, I put in the link there so now I'm going to answer uh, the questions that were made here just one sec get rid of that screen okay So, is Makam played only in Turkish music or is there a crossover into Arabic performance? So, uh, Makam is played in both. However, uh, over time and distance and region, different things have developed. And um, the Makam the tradition goes back a very, a very long time, um, pre-Islam, I would say. And, um, and this modal tradition is, is very ancient and was used in all these different regions. However, the maqam that we know of today, I think, personally, has largely been influenced by Ottoman maqam because of the fact that the Ottoman Empire you know, had control of Greece, had Egypt, North Africa, these kind of areas, all the way down into the Hijaz region of, um, the Hijaz region of Saudi Arabia. Um, some of the Persian Gulf um, and Iraq, Baghdad. However, all these regions had their own Maqam traditions. Um, yeah, it's a good, okay, so I see what you mean by your question. Uh, the Maqam I'm demonstrating now, is it a spillover from Turkish music? That's a good question. I don't think so, um, because uh, it could be. Uh, it's just that this name appears in some of the more medieval treata treatises as well. Um, now, it's a very good question. I, no one would really know, but the modal entity known as Bastanegar has actually changed. It's, uh, it's not what it used to be. Uh, this, these intervals and the way we play it now, the more ancient um, Bastanegar was different. It had different uh, characteristics. It didn't even sound quite like this. Um, but for whatever reason, through historical changes and you know how things get changed, in different regions, um, this modal entity changed. And now it is, I think it is a spillover. The modern version that we have is a spillover from Ottoman music, I think. Anyway, at, at a certain point um, in, let's, I think it was the 19th century or 18th century, some prominent musicians from Egypt did travel to um, Turkey and picked up some makams along the way. Uh, like... Uh, uh, Makam Farfaza, these kind of uh, Makams that were in vogue in the Ottoman period. Um, and so there's there's different conceptualities of what a Makam is. Uh, and uh, so there's some you know discontinu discontinuity and different ways of performing different Makams. For example, uh, this is a good point that I want to make. Uh, the, tur the Ottoman version of uh, Bastanir Yar sounds a little bit different than the the Arabic version. Of course, the Arabic, this is the intonation I'm talking about. So the Arabic intonation, the B half flat, is quite flat. If you have your oud or you have your voice, try to copy that. Then the G flat, is fairly normal G flat in relation to the D I would say it's a just intonation uh, re um, interval but the Turkish version of Basne Negar the B half flat is much sharper E half flat is much sharper too. And the G flat is even sharper. So you have a very, it sounds completely different in some ways. The intervals are so close, but their intonation is different, so it has a completely different vibe. The saba is very distinct. distinct and very important in the performance of um, the Ottoman version of or Turkish version of Bastanikar. 
sharp that B half flat is? It's not really a B half flat anymore. It's just very, it's just a little bit flatter than a B natural, let's say. But that's how they played in the Turkish tradition. Um, in the Arabic tradition it would be different. ear training, are there any oud practitioners or performances that demonstrate this mukam particularly well? It's very rare in in, um, in Arabic music and I haven't found a very good um, a very good demonstration myself. Um, I do know that um, another YouTuber, um, another mukam uh, teacher um, Sami Abu Shemais he also has a YouTube channel where he does discuss uh, Bastanigar and um, the Arabic version, as at least anyway, um, you can find a lot of Turkish uh, versions. Uh, Turkish versions are easy to find. Uh, you just have to make sure the right, the spelling is correct. Um, so yeah, if you want to look up uh, Sami Abu Shemais, he's a violinist though, so um, you know he, the it's not going to be quite like uh, the, f the same flavor as you hear on on oud. Um, but you can check him out. And um, I do cover this one in my Makam Mastery program as well, uh, The this uh, Makam. Um, let's see here. I don't think I have, uh, what I do want to do, I don't think I have like an ear training module on this um, particular Makam. Uh, so there's room for developing that and putting that into the program. Um, if that's something you're interested in, I can definitely do something. Uh, like that. But this mukam is very rare when it comes to um, Arabic music and you don't really hear it that often. You sometimes hear it uh, as a modulation from from when they play Sika up on the E half flat. Or Huzan. Played on the Sika note, if you play Best in Nagar transposed to the Sika note, they would be here. You see, you have a transposed version, and uh, that, that's where it starts to get uh, far removed from the location names that we used to have in Arabic and Turkish music. So, yeah, um, that's what I wanted to discuss today. Uh, let's just do a little bit more, uh, let's do some ear training right now and do some improvised melodies and try to follow along uh, with me here.
Ra ra ra. 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 Do that again. Go. Da da da. 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 Ra ra ra. Ra ra ra. Ra ra ra. Ra ra ra. Da ra 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 ra. Go. Da ra 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 ra. Try to use your voice to copy these melodies. Now try these. Da 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 da. 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 So this is a good idea. I think uh, what I'll do is I'll create a mo module uh, notation sheet music uh, for Bastinagar and uh, probably record and add this to the Macomb Master Program. This is a good little uh, segment that uh, you can practice, do a little ear training. That'll probably take me some time to um, record that and uh, publish it out on the Macomb Mastery Program. But this is a, a definitely an important Macomb that I think needs to be um, developed a bit more in terms of, uh, you know, just knowing what the intervals are. Uh, don't do it justice in terms of really knowing how to perform this Macomb. And so what I've done myself in learning this Macomb is not only if you can't find sources of good repertoire in Arabic music, go to Turkish music and try to gain something from those sources and there's a lot of repertoire that you can find um, in Turkish music um, if you can read and decipher Turkish notation um, then that's a great place to go um, yeah so uh, let's see yeah yeah Macomb, uh, Macomb world may have some different descriptions of uh, Bastanikar um, there's yeah there's different ways I'm my the way that I've uh, interpreted it is more of the Ottoman way of describing it. Um, there are other kind of things that uh, that are there and also um, Sami Abu Shimes has some different ideas uh, how those kind of relate. I think some of the way that I approach these uh, more rare maqams are drawing more on Ottoman music. Yeah. So um, yeah that's all about it that I wanted to talk about today. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can always email me at support at oodforguitarist.com if you want to discuss these things further, have some questions that you didn't get to ask today. Um, this was a bit of an advanced lesson, so I hope uh, any of you beginners out there were able to follow. Um, and if you are interested in um, the Macomb Mastery Program, where you can uh, go through all the different uh, Arabic Macombs, the most common ones at least, there's a, there's a most of them are, are there, uh, at least in descriptions, and you can uh, work out the building blocks, the 
uh, tetrachords and uh, pentachords that go into them to find the connections um, between different makamat and learn different ways that you can modulate between makamat. That's the big feature about the uh, Makam Mastery Program that I like. It also gives you repertoire suggestions of where to listen to uh, different makams and uh, some sheet music as well to um, to uh, study if you if you want to study some repertoire you have some examples of good repertoire in different makams and um, also the bonus for enrolling this week is those uh, uh, four taksim workshops these taksim workshops were really great I really enjoyed doing them and people really enjoyed them I basically did it in two ways um, the I created a template which shows you kind of where you would start your taksim and how you would go through, what modulations you could do, and how you would finish your taksim. I did one uh, workshop where I actually wrote, notated a taksim, an example notated taksim, that you could actually learn with the video and also with the notation. So you could follow along and really see the intricacies of what's going on, the Risha work. Um, I really enjoyed those workshops and people found them very valuable too. Um, so those are going to, four will be included as a bonus if you enroll this week. And um, I'll be doing another workshop in November around, uh, I think, the 20th or the 19th uh, for American time zones. And uh, you can, you'll get invited to that and you can join. Also, it'll be recorded so you can also, if you don't, if it doesn't work out with the time, you can always just watch the replay and gain a lot from it. And we'll be doing uh, another, another Another uh, Turkish and Arabic makam, but it's more uh, known in um, Turkish music, makam Suzadil. It's a very beautiful makam. On makam world, it's lumped in with makam Hijazkar, Shad Araban, and um, what's the other one? Uh, the other, uh, Shahnaz. These uh, four makams are transpositions of each other, but they do have different uh, flavors and characteristics if you study uh, the Ottoman repertoire. Because uh, these again, these some of these makams are spillovers from Ottoman music into Arabic music, and uh, so they're they're looked at a bit. They're approached differently in each tradition. But Suzadil is a beautiful makam, which I think is worth um, learning the proper seyir for, as, as defined in Turkish tradition, Ottoman tradition. So we'll be doing that a, a workshop on uh, takasim in makam Suzadil, a very beautiful makam. So yeah. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today guys really happy to see you guys here. Thanks for the good questions really nice uh, To have you here Gary mark. Thank you. Thanks for coming and I hope you guys have a great uh, weekend. Thanks. Bye